Good morning everybody, this is the third book of Psalms that we're looking at today. It is July the 29th and we're looking at Psalm 73 and from Psalm 73 to Psalm 83 we have the third book of Psalms which relates to the book of Leviticus um, and in Psalm 73 we have a Psalm of Asaph Asaph is one of the hymn writers of Israel. He speaks about the fate of the wicked. So let's read it together. He's truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps were well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Now this is a, a hymn, <laughs> it's not a lecture, this isn't philosophy, this is a hymn, but it's a hymn in which Asaph describes his own spiritual experience. He got to a point in his life in which he was envious of the prosperity of the wicked, of the foolish. Of course the word foolish in scripture is not referring to someone that is mentally deranged. It's not referring to somebody that is lacking in education. These people are very bright. They are foolish because they live a life in Israel under the law as if God doesn't know and God doesn't hear. And so in verse 4 and onward, he describes the wicked. He says, for there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride compassed them about as a chain, and violence covers them like a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more they have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt and they speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth. Therefore his people return hither and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, how does God know? And is there any knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world and increase in riches. Now, you know, as Christians, we need to be very careful too. We must not become overawed by people of wealth. We must not think that those that are, those that are fat, I don't mean fat in being overweight, I mean those that are fully fed, those that are rich, those that are full of pride, those that speak against God. We must not assume that they're great people. They're not. They're the foolish. They are the wicked. Verse 13, he says, Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency. He said, Why was I living a righteous life when all these wicked live a great life? They live a great life. They've got money. They've got influence. They've got verve. They've got courage. They've got everything that the heart could wish for. He says, for all day long I have been plagued and chastened every morning. Um, he says, let me read on verse 15. He says, if I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the ch generation of the children. Verse 16. Now verse 16 is my password for today. Beautiful phrase. Let me read it to you. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. You know, when I thought about the wicked prospering, it was too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of God and then I understood their end. Okay, you see, Asif is learning. He looks out upon a world where the wicked prosper. He said, but then I went into the sanctuary of God and then I understood their end. 
Verse 18. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou castest them down into destruction. How are they brought into destruction? As in a moment. They are utterly consumed with terrors. As a dream when one awaketh. And so, O Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image. Thus my heart was grieved. I was pricked in my reins. So foolish was I and ignorant. I was as a beast before thee. Now he's calling himself foolish. He's not using the word foolish in the same way in which he describes the wicked. He's using the word foolish in verse 22 in the sense of how ignorant and how uninformed he was. He says, I was so foolish to be envious of the wicked. So foolish. I was like a, an animal in front of you with no knowledge at all. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast held me up by my right hand. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a whoring from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. And so this is, this you could call a sort of a conversion experience. This is a change of mind, a change of understanding. And how does Asaph come into this change of understanding? He comes into this change of understanding by going into the presence of God and receiving prophecy from him about the ultimate end of the wicked. They may be haughty now, they may be wealthy now, they may be healthy now, but their end will be very swift. <clears throat> now, Psalm 74 <coughs> is also um, written by Asaph, and amazingly, it's on the same theme. It is an appeal to the Lord. O oh God, why hast thou cast off, cast us off forever? Why doth thy anger smoke against the sheep of thy pasture? Remember the congregation which thou hast purchased of old, the rod of thine inheritance which thou hast redeemed. This Mount Zion wherein thou hast dwelt, lift up thy feet unto the perpetual desolations, even all that the enemy hath done wickedly, in the sanctuary thine enemies roar in the midst of the congregations they set up their ensigns for signs a man was famous according as how he lifted up his axe upon thick trees but now they break down the carved work thereof at once with axes and with hammers they have cast fire into thy sanctuary they have defiled by casting down the dwelling place of thy name to the ground. They said in their hearts, let us destroy them together. They have burned up all the synagogues of God in the land. We see not our signs. There is no more any prophet, neither is there among us any that knoweth how long. O God, how long shall the adversary reproach? Shall the enemy blaspheme thy name forever? Why withdrawest thy hand, even thy right hand, um, pluck it out of thy bosom? For God is my king of old, working salvation in the midst of the earth. Now notice that little phrase, verse 12. That's my password for the second psalm. God is my king of old, working salvation in the midst of the earth. What does he mean? What do you mean salvation? That nobody was a Christian here. In what way did God save um, um, the people of old? Well, verse 13 tells us. He said, Thou didst divide the sea by thy strength. Thou breakest the heads 
of the dragons in the waters. Have you got that now? The Lord in the past, in the distant past, took some of these great terrifying dinosaurs. These were huge creatures. They were called the dragons of the waters. And he broke their heads in the waters. That's what God did. He saved the people by destroying these dinosaurs. Verse 14. Thou breakest the heads of the Leviathan in pieces and gavest them to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. So God in the past, he took these two great <clears throat> terrifying monsters, perhaps lots of them, and he breaks their heads, smashing their heads into pieces. You know, when you smash the head of a dinosaur into pieces, then it's dead. And the meat of that creature was able to be eaten for a long time. You gave him to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. Thou didst cleave the mountain and the flood. Thou dry, driest up mighty rivers. And the day is thine and the night is thine. Thou hast prepared the light of the prepared the light and the sun thou hast set all the borders of the earth thou hast made summer and winter remember this that the enemy hath reproached O Lord and that the foolish people have blasphemed thy name deliver not the soul with the turtle dove unto the multitude of the wicked forget not the congregation of thy poor Forever. Let me read that phrase again, verse 19. O oh, deliver not the soul of thy turtle dove unto the multitude of the wicked. What he's saying is, he says, I don't want the wicked to be um, saved by a sacrifice of a turtle dove. <clears throat> he says, I don't want you to deliver them. He says, do not forget the congregation of thy poor forever. Have respect unto the covenant, for the dark places of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty. Let not the oppressed return ashamed. Let the poor and needy praise thy name. Arise, O God, plead thine own cause. Remember the foolish man reproacheth thee daily. Forget not the voice of your enemies the tumult of those that rise up against thee increaseth continually so Asaph is coming to the Lord and he's pleading with the Lord to deal with the wicked to deal with his enemies he says you've done it in the past you did it to those great monsters of the sea and land you did it to the Leviathan you did it to the dragons you smash the heads and you save the people and you can do it again. You can do it to those that are cruel, to those that oppress the poor, to those that oppress, oppress the needy. This is the salvation which we have in Old Testament times. Wow. Well, God bless you. It's wonderful to speak to you and look forward to catching up with you again tomorrow. Bye for now.